Hey, what if I told you that the upcoming images were not taken with a macro lens? In this video, I'm going to review, test and compare the Raynox DCR250 and the Nisi close-up lens. Two great options to transform almost every lens into a macro lens so that you don't have to buy a dedicated macro lens to do macro photography. And I also wanted to know what happens when we combine those adapters to a real macro lens. That's why we're going to start with a 90mm macro lens 1 to 1 magnification of Sony on my A6300 because that's the macro setup I use most of the time. I want to show you what happens when we combine this 1 to 1 magnification lens with the Nisi filter. What will happen to our image quality and what to our magnification? Let's find out. For both images I'm using an aperture of 8 and ISO 100. Okay, the focus distance has totally changed. I think we now can get a little bit closer. Okay, that's the image taken just with the macro lens without the Nisi filter. Um, this is the image with the Nisi filter, so I could almost double the magnification of my lens. And then I have zoomed into the image without the Nisi filter to make it easier to compare both of the images. Actually, I'm kind of surprised that the difference between those two images is so small because we can get much closer while keeping 24 megapixels. So I was expecting to get much more detail, but I have chosen an exposure time of one second. So maybe there's a little bit of motion blur which destroys the amount of detail we actually gain. So I'm going to repeat the test, but this time with short exposure times and a flash. And yes, I could have cut this part of the video, but maybe you want to learn from my mistakes. Maybe not. This is the image without the Nisi filter and that is the image with the Nisi filter. Let's zoom in a little bit and compare. Okay, I'm kind of happy that there actually is a little bit of improvement regarding the amount of detail you get using the Nisi lens. If I wouldn't have found anything, the whole comparison wouldn't have made any sense at all. Okay, and now let's compare the Nisi result with the Raynox DCR250. I'm pretty curious to see which adapter offers the highest amount of detail using both adapters with a 1 to 1 magnification lens, the 90mm. Hmm. Nice. Okay, that is the result using a macro lens in combination with the Raynox DCR250. And this is the image together with the Nisi adapter. What do you think? Okay, I think it's pretty clear which adapter got the first point here. The Raynox offers a higher magnification while keeping very high amount of detail and it is very easy to mount, it's lightweight and it is cheaper. So if you already have a macro lens and you just want to higher the magnification, that's the adapter of your choice. Hey, thanks for watching, buy the Nisi adapter and have a good day. But what if you don't have a macro lens? Then the Raynox is still a good choice but the Nisi got its strength, especially on zoom lenses. And that's what we're gonna have a closer look now. The Nisi close-up lens got a diameter of 77 mm and it comes with two step-up rings, one from 72 mm and one from 67 mm. To show you what kind of images and what kind of magnification you can get using the Nisi close-up lens on your lens, I was taking images between a focal range of 70 to 300 mm. I've not reviewed the images in Lightroom yet, but especially the images at 300 mm were just incredible. Let's take a closer look. Those are the uncropped images. I have always added an image of a ruler so that you can get a feeling how high the magnification really is. And this is a comparison between the 300mm with the Nisi lens and the 1 to 1 magnification lens without any adapter. So the Nisi lens together with a wildlife tele lens offers a higher magnification than a dedicated macro lens. Would you have expected to see that? Now we just have to find out if this setup will also work with the Raynox. 
I've just figured out there's a little problem because the Raynox VCR250 does only support lens diameters between 52 and 67 millimeters. So my tele lens is actually too big to mount or be combined with the Raynox. So the Raynox only works on small diameter lens and the Nisi just on big lens. But Nisi has also published a smaller version, which I have not tested yet, so I cannot say if that is a good alternative. But I think this just makes sense because it got its strength on the long focal length, then the magnification is at its highest. So this I'd only recommend if you have a long focal lens or a zoom lens with at least 90 or 135 millimeters. Before I give you my final conclusion, if those adapters are really worth the money, what if you don't have a macro lens and don't have a wide life telephoto lens? Now I'm gonna combine those adapters with all the lens I got to find out if there are some cool combination to do macro photography without a real macro lens. I saved for about two years money for this lens and I've not used it for a couple of months. That's really pretty sad. What about wide angle lens? This is actually more a fisheye. It is 12 millimeter and it is everything but not a macro lens. I must say that I really like this look using the wide angle lens, but this is not working at all because the lens is so wide that we have a huge vignetting here and we had to crop a lot. So we need at least, yeah, I'd say maybe like 30 or 50 millimeters of focal length. What about 35 mm? Do you think that is enough focal length to work with a Raynox adapter? That is an image I've taken with the 35 mm prime of Sony and that's the image together with the Raynox adapter. When you watch closely you can see a little bit of a difference. Okay, great. But what if we combine the Nisi adapter with a Raynox DCR250? I used my advanced technical engineering skills to combine them to one great macro adapter. Basically, I transformed my macro lens into a microscope. I went from 1 to 1 magnification down to 4 to 1 magnification. That was pretty cool because I have never seen such amount of detail with my lens. But that setup was just for fun because it's so hard to work with that. It is very heavy, you have camera shake and yeah, it, it was pretty tough to get some good images. So there was nothing I would recommend to do. Okay, before I come to my final conclusion, just one thing which is very important for me and probably also for you. When you're using those adapters to start macro or improve your macro photography, keep in mind that the field of depth is extremely small and you have to fight with camera shake. So if you not have an optical image stabilization, you have to use fast shutter speeds. And that's why you need to use a flash and especially it works pretty good when you also have a flash diffuser to freeze the image and shoot at low ISO. I have created a list for you with my personal pros and cons about those two adapters. I don't think that you want to listen 10 more minutes to my voice anymore. So if you ask yourself if you need or want one of those, here is the answer.